<laughs> Welcome to Morally End. My name's Mark Machado. This is an emergency pod because there's been some breaking news coming out of SLC when Indu Hasaranga has resigned as captain of the T20 team. Uh, before we get into it, just a reminder, hit the subscribe button, hit that follow button, subscribe to the newsletter. We've got a piece of the Vishka Fernando coming out very shortly. Uh, my name's Mark Machado. I'm in London. I'm joined by the doyen of shrunken cricket, Nick Brooks, who's in South London. And I'm joined by the professor of all shrunken cricket, uh, shrunken critic, of, 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 crit, of critical thinking around the shrunken team. That's his exact professional title, <laughs> Dominic Machado in North America. Um, guys, let's just dive straight into this news today. Uh, we all kind of thought it might happen. Nick, it's actually happened today. What was your initial thoughts when you when the news came through when we got the the kind of news flash and the press release yeah uh i think it was just a bit of sadness really around the whole situation like it um i mean it's been a brief tenure i think in many ways it hasn't necessarily been the best it certainly hasn't been the smoothest uh but Hasaranga, he's just such an all-action figure, right? And uh, I really wanted him to do well. I wanted him to have a long stint. I, th- You know, after he did great things as captain of B-Love last year, I think there was a lot of optimism coming into his captaincy, which dissipated really fast. And there's been a lot of mudslinging, especially in the last few weeks. And yeah, my overriding feeling about the whole thing, Marky, is just kind of sadness. It's quite gutting, isn't it, Dom, that... It's kind of. It feels like. Oh, here we go again. Another captaincy. Another reset. Yeah, yeah. It's really dispiriting. You know, um, I think a lot of people were really eager for when Indus captaincy a few months back. Uh, once it was clear that Dawson's time as captain had been over, and they thought this would be a new era of Sri Lankan cricket. He would bring a bravado to Sri Lankan cricket, and then the things that were kind of his greatest strengths, his passion, his flair, his excitability became negatives that people piled on against him. And I feel bad for the guy. You know, he's, he had six months of captaincy. Uh, he was suspended for a part of it, injured for a part of it. And we didn't really get to see what a one Indu captaincy would look like. Um, you know, we, as he says in his letter, his resignation letter, they were really close to winning that Bangladesh match and that they would have been in the Super 8 and it might have been a totally different story. Um, cricket is a game of fine margins and the thing that saddens me is when Indu is 26 years old, right? I, I hope he gets another stint at the captaincy some point in the future, um, but I think I hope for him that it makes his game better. It gives him more time to focus on his batting and his bowling because he brings more than enough to the team in that capacity. But I, I'm also gutted for him to see that a player, you know, one of our true superstars since Mihaila and Sangha retired, to see him go out like this and um, with much fanfare is kind of disheartening. Uh, Nick, I remember us talking at the time when he was a poison captain, when it kind of felt inevitable. But one of the things somebody said on this show was kind of like, what are you expecting here? For him to be captain for another kind of 10 years? For him to be get to a kind of almost Mahela point where he captains for three, four, five seasons and then goes, I'm kind of done with it. I stay in the team. Or was it always going to be a case that it was going to end in that his captaincy was going to end in tears? Uh, I, I think you've got to say at this stage that like this is just another piece of evidence about how hard it is to captain teams in Sri Lanka, right? How much scrutiny gets lumped on you, how much blame gets put at your doorstep. And I was really hopeful that we were going to entering a kind of Wanindu era and that he was going to progress towards captaining the ODI team too and that he might have a long crack at it with good support but yeah it just hasn't turned out like this and as Dom touched on I mean everything that could go wrong in his incredibly short tenure kind of has right he's been suspended uh people have had a go at him for arguing with umpires and all that for being too mouthy he's been injured and then you know things just um really fell apart during that two game stretch at the world cup but it's a, yeah a tiny body of evidence like as dom said we don't know really what one into the captain looks like but i mean you got to say 
even not captaining this side, there's a huge amount of pressure on his shoulders, right? To be the strike bowler in the middle overs, to be the guy who comes in and is has to boost Sri Lanka's scoring with the bat. Um, and maybe this was just one string too many for his bow. And uh, yeah, that maybe we'll start to see a kind of revitalized, rejuvenated Hasaranga uh, now that he's taken this decision, which I'm sure he took with a heavy heart. I mean, that... Um, resignation letter kind of read as a bit of like I've I'm I'm jumping before I'm pushed right and uh, but yeah I hope that we see the best of him in this India series that comes up in what July August yeah it's, it's only a few couple of weeks away now uh, th- sixteen days I think at the point of recording fifteen days um, at the point of recording it starts we'll get into that in a bit, want to still kind of focus on the captaincy a little bit. Um, the kind of bookies favourites, as it were, the kind of word in the street is that we're, it's going to kind of pass along the line of succession uh, to Charith Asalanka with Patam Nasanka stepping up into vice captaincy. Um, I should point out here, I think Charith actually captained Hasaranga at not just school uh, under 18 schoolboy level, but also or under 19s, I think the page looker, um, at, at the under 19s World Cup as well, right? So maybe this was actually the kind of traditionalist choice, let's say, the orthodox choice from from the get go. Um, I'm, I'm interested to see how this duo do it, right? Because actually, since both have broke into the team, they've been pretty much our, fair, our most consistent batters in all the formats that they've been given, Nisanka is absolutely smashing it at the moment and is a totally transformed player from the one that broke into the side. And Asalanka is is kind of our Mr. Steady, isn't it? Do you think, though, Dom, that he could be one of those people who, you know, how will he handle the captaincy? Do you expect to see a, a slight dip in performance? Do you think he's going to be as kind of dynamic in terms of the kind of team selection and and you know have have as much of as an input as his predecessor did that's a those are all great questions i think um it's tricky to say you know i think with one one problem we've had is as soon as someone shows a bit of talent there's been a desire to give them the captaincy right so Kussel has those two big innings in the ODI World Cup. All of a sudden, Dawson finds himself on the outs and Kussel's captain. And we know that for a lot of players, it takes away from your ability to focus on your primary trade, right? So if you're a batter, it takes time away from time you spend in the nets batting, from time you spend watching opposing bowlers, all those kind of things. It takes a lot to manage the captaincy. Obviously, the fact that um charth has done it at multiple levels and i think he's captain for ssc as well um and he's captain sri lanka emerging teams under 23 teams he has a lot of experience he is a good sign but i think we have to be incredibly patient with charth because he's still growing into his own as a player um especially in the t20s i don't think he's quite reached the level of ability or capability he has in the one day game um, I think there's tons of talent for him to be a white ball great for Sri Lanka. And I think for me, that is the number one priority. What's going to make Sri Lanka a competitive team in the future is him reaching his potential as a batter and same with Potham. Um, so I'm a little bit wary of that. That being said, you know, I wonder if it signals a change in the power dynamic, right? When, when Indu seems to have had quite a bit of influence on selection, um, on who makes the team and those kind of factors. Maybe um, Sri Lanka is hoping that they'll have a head coach kind of take the lead with that and the captain kind of marshal the on the field stuff, but not really play a major role in team building or team selection, right? I think Nick brought it up last time. You have captain's teams and you have coaches teams, right? And so maybe Sri Lanka is thinking, okay, we don't want to have a captain's team. We don't, we don't have anyone who can do that. And we're going to appoint a coach and, the captain is going to be the kind of caretaker on the field. Um, the one thing I have to say is I have to ask that Sri Lanka fans, I know we're, we're a passionate bunch. I know we follow this team 
um, no matter what happens. But be patient with a young le- guy like Charis. We need to give him time to grow into the captaincy if he's next. We need hit to give him time to learn on the job, right? He's only 26 years old. To expect a young, inexperienced player um, to come out and captain a side where there's a lot of vol- volatility, right? Where we have a new coach, we're going to be playing India. Um, there's all sorts of selection issues that have come up. To come in and just turn everything around, I don't think that's that's going to happen. It's going to take time. We need to support him and build him up over the next few years, right? If we're going to go in the Charith direction. Um, I think the only other option, right? There's only one other option would be to unify the white ball ca- uh, captaincy under Mendes, but I don't think they're going to do that. Or, or you could give it to, <coughs> could give it to Kusul Mendes, or, you know, there, there is an ancient English prophecy that when football comes home, that Angelo must lead. So, you know, like maybe maybe Angelo <laughs> takes it in the short term. I don't know. We'll find out on Sunday, but that's a whole different thing. Um, Nick, was it 2015 or 2016, like the year of a thousand shrunken captains, where basically <laughs> everyone everyone got a go at some point? Um, I, yeah, I, I think it was 2016. But I mean, there have been a few periods like that, right? I think back in, what yeah. was it, 2012, there was a really brief Dilshan captaincy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I agree with Dom that I think Charith needs to be given time. And he's definitely like... Uh, more of a quiet man, isn't he? Kind of more unassuming captain. And so hopefully the whole kind of weight of expectation won't fall on him in the same way as it has done on Winindu. I think he seems like he's got a good temperament for it, right? He seems mild-mannered. He seems pretty sort of level-headed, steady kind of guy. And um, I think there's going to be a lot of direction coming to this team from... Samath Jaya in the short term. And so I think that that's quite a nice little uh, pairing and that they can play off each other quite well and that Samath can take on quite a bit of the leadership in a way that maybe Silverwood couldn't and, and allow uh, Charith to kind of bed in. Um, in 1992, Nick, I think Aravinda de Silva was the captain, right? And he was our kind of talismanic player at that point. Uh, the next edition of the World Cup, Schlunk would obviously go in and win it. Is that what's going to happen here? Is, is Hasaranga going to score a century at the next World Cup at home? <laughs> yeah, well, maybe. Well, I mean, I think Aravinda was only captain, right, because Arjuna did something, typically Arjuna, I can't remember quite what it was, but um, he was pissing people off and he had to yeah. sit, at, sit at home and watch for a while. And so maybe we might get the same from one Hindu, right? Get him sitting on the couch, uh Kotu in hand, a couple of short eats and just like three months off to rev him up and he'll come back and be smashing bowlers all over the park. And maybe bowling with a bit more <laughs> fizz as well because it hasn't been a great LPL for him bowling-wise. I know we'll get to that later, but um, it's, he's, he's taken some tap, isn't he? Yeah, I, I actually, I, I, interestingly, I think part of the problem that Hasarang has had that since, what, he's been captain for about a year, is it? No, it's not even that, is it? It's about nine months. Six months. Six yeah. months is. I kind of feel like he's been because of injuries. He just hasn't played enough cricket. He just kind of always feels like he's coming into it pretty under undercooked. So actually, stay off the kotu and get back. <laughs> get your overs in. Uh, I, I was going to say, Nick. Yeah, the, I, I don't think the Sri Lankan audience wants to hear about one Indo hitting more kotu. No, I think the general yeah. consensus is that the kotu needs to go. Um, it's yeah, it's the the brown bread and water diet from here on out. Yeah, send, send the kotu <laughs> my way, mate. Like, uh, <laughs> I've got plenty of place for it, and and you know, a lot of uh, even our audience want me to shut up. So my mouth's full. I can't say anything. <laughs> So that works for everyone. <laughs> um, if you're still listening, hit the subscribe button, hit the follow, leave us comments. Who do you think should be captain? What should the next direction be? The next directional shift be of shrunken cricket? Um, where, where are we going Mark, to can next? I add one, Go can on, I Dom. add one thing? Yeah, I, and I think the other thing is I think people have been thinking that Charth is going to be some type of silver bullet as a captain, but watching Jaffna, I mean, Jaffna's been playing well, but there have been some questionable decisions on the part of Charith. He was playing DDS over Asmatola Omarzai. Um, his batting orders have looked a little weird at times. He's bowled um, 
He bowled DDS instead of Jason Berendorf with the new ball. So I think we also need to temper expectations about what Tarrant, the captain, is going to do. And he's going to be learning on the job and adapting to international cricket. I think it's a different thing captaining under 19 and captaining at the international level where you can't miss tricks. So I, I, that's another kind of caution that we want to throw out there is he's still in development as a captain. It's not um, as if we're getting 2012 Mihaela where he's, you know, a cricketing savant and he's imagining where fielders are going. He's got plans on plans on plans. He's still someone who's growing into the game. Yeah. I think that's a really important point to make, right? Because I mean, there is a melancholy. We, you know, we, we, we talked about this briefly already, but there's a melancholy about Hasaranga's reign as with the captaincy because it kind of feels like he had one one chance at it, right? One shot. And actually, the best captains in the world have much more time than that to kind of grow into the role, to build the role, to find, you know, to, to kind of create that culture that they want to create. Hasaranga's cricket was kind of total cricket, right? So it was all action. It was kind of, you know, he, he played it at, at the edge of everything, pushing everything to, to as far as you possibly can push it. And, you know, it had one shot at this one ICC tournament. It didn't work and he's out on his ear. And I think there is, you know, from my perspective, I, I think that's a kind of a shame for him. And also, there's, we just don't want to get, get back into this pre- precedent of, bad tournament, you know, we're playing India next. We've got three ODIs with India. We've got a terrible record against India in the in yeah. the kind of last 18 months or so. What happens if we get if we end up scoring less than 150 runs in those three ODIs, which absolutely could totally happen, right? Because our boys do not like playing their boys. And then what? We could we're just gonna sack everyone else again and you know I joke about it, but then what do they do? Appoint Angelo as captain, and then there's a whole other kerfuffle. You forgot Chundamal. You yeah. forgot Chundamal. There's always the, the Chundi option. Yeah, he, he's the highest T20 run scorer Shrug has ever produced now, right? 4,000 runs. Did I not see that yeah. stat somewhere? So, you know, may, maybe Chandy deserves a shot at it. I don't know. I'm not a selector. I'm not in charge of this. I just exist on a YouTube channel in a podcast to tell you what is going on. Nick, do you want to jump in here? Uh, yeah, I know you. Well, you throw me a bit of hospital pass there, Marky. I mean, uh, I did because I, bring... I was talking. I was talking myself in, in, <laughs> into uh, hospital we, myself. Yeah, we're getting a recall for Isaru as well while we're at it. Um, this is it's the uncle's agenda after all. Uh, but yeah, yeah um, I no, I really hope that things just that. Sri Lanka put up a decent fight in the India series, then we can start to get back to a bit of stability uh, because it's a couple of banana skin months coming up ahead, aren't they? I mean, I've been watching a lot of the test match from Lords over the past couple of days and, um, you know, the West Indies have buckled a little bit with their batting and uh, it's not unimaginable to see a similar thing happening to Sri Lanka in what, six weeks time. And, you know, I think if, Sri Lanka put up a performance like the West Indies had done, have done in the last couple of days. Knives would really be out, right? Yeah, we got to yeah. get Gus Atkinson on the cottus, like, and, and, and possibly <laughs> a couple of dodgy ones before. Yeah, it's uh, a good plan. <laughs> like before that Old Trafford test. Um, yeah, no, I, I think that that's a very good point you raised there, Nick. Because problem is with cricket is when one thing goes wrong, it, it has a kind of domino effect, right? And then, yeah, Sri Lanka cricket is only one bad result away from a from a crisis at any given time, right? The the World Cup did not go to plan. I think you, could, I kind of feel there's mitigate enough mitigating circumstances and a bit of inexperience around the leadership of that team that you could you could if you wanted to write it off. Our administrators or you know the people around the team have decided that's not what they want to do. They want to take it in a different direction. Silverwood out, Mahela out, captain out. Sanathin, it feels like going a little bit back to the old. I mean, I don't think from a shrunk perspective, that's necessarily a bad thing. Our old is very gold, but we've got to, you know, we've got to keep mo- moving on and, and keep showing progression um, at some point as well. And also, I think, I think, you know, it, it is his resignation statement. Uh, or letter, sorry, when he said he felt like he had the best team around them, the best squad. 
I think that's probably true. I think you could possibly argue a few places, but don't, that 18, that squad of 18, I know there's only 15 in the squad, but I, we said it before in this podcast, I think that squad of 18 is more or less the best 18 T20 players that Schlag could have at the moment. And I think it would be hard if you've got to repick the squad, which you've obviously got to do for for India, to to kind of... I don't think there'll be that much change in it. But because of what happens in Shrugger Cricket, because of the culture around it, I think actually there will be a lot of change. I think about five or six of those players aren't coming back into it. Um, this might be a good moment to talk about the LPL and players that have impressed us who could be in that squad, Dom. I mean... You got to start with if we're talking about players who are not in that 15 18, it's got to be Avishka Fernando. He has been on absolute fire. Mr. LPL is back. Um, I've got this fully analyzed in a newsletter piece coming out, but I am starting to grow convinced by the idea that Avishka could bat at four for us. Um, first, we have absolutely no one to bat at four right now. We've been using DDS and Sadira. Um, even when we won the Asia Cup, we were using Danushka Gunatilika out of position. Um, Avishka has shown some real power in that number four spot, spot. It takes him away from those swinging left arm deliveries that have troubled him so much in the recent past. And he's really been getting into the bowlers. And at first, I have to admit, I thought, okay, um, you know, he's smashing around a Kila, uh, Kila Dunn and Jaya, so what? He does that every LPL. But then he was taking down the Fizz. He was taking down Tushara. He was taking down Matisha Patirana the other day. These are good bowlers, right? He was taking down Toskin. Um, if he can convert that to the international level, and and um, I think that will be huge. And some people will say, well, he's scoring runs on flat pitches, but that's the name of T20. You have to be able to score runs quickly on flat pitches. Um, so I think Avishka should get a run. I think giving him a run at four will be um, good for the side. Um, and I think we have to be very careful with these young players. Uh, dropping them in against India and saying sink or swim is not the best introduction. I think I've seen a lot of people putting out teams with a bunch of debutantes. Sure, you want to bring new talent in, but you got to do it slowly or else they're going to get chewed up and spit out before they have a chance to get their feet wet. You need to support them. And I think um, another thing I'll take from the LPL is that Sri Lanka does have batting talent. We were talking a lot about how they don't, they can bat. Um, and I think if they do it more consistently there, it's going to manifest in the national team. Uh, I, I agree with almost everything you said there, Dob. I say almost everything. I can't think of anything I didn't quite agree with. Uh, Nick, what's your uh, takeaways been from the LPL? If yeah, any. You might not have uh, any. no, because I totally to watch. <laughs> yeah, they are not making it easy for us to follow it, but we try and we get by, yeah. right? Um, yeah, I think the temptation might be also for them to throw Chaminda Wickramasinghe in, and I kind yeah. of agree with Dom on this that uh, easy just maybe it's a still a little bit too early, and that we've got to see a bit more from him. I mean, it's very easy to see these players do, um, you know, play great innings as Chamindu has done and get really excited. But then we also have to remember and slightly temper our expectations with the fact that like someone like Isra Udana, who's about 49, is smashing the ball out of the park and taking a load of wickets. Yeah. Chandamal is um, scoring runs, striking at 180. And so that slightly, you know, I think you've got to kind of adjust your thinking a little bit. And... I agree with you, Marky, that um, the squad that went to the World Cup, I think, was largely right. I think Avishka has to bat number four. That's the one big change I'd like to see. And, um, well, it's interesting to see where they go now with Angelo and Shanika, right? Because of just not the fact that they haven't performed in the LPL, but the the age factor, right? And the idea that we're looking towards 2026 and 2028 now. And is it time to start building a new setup and looking at seam bowling all-rounders who are going to be in their prime when those tournaments come around? Yeah. I think I think um, Chamaka, now that Mwanindu is not captain, seems like also someone who might um, get put in. He's been batting really well down the order. And, and, you know, if you're looking for a replacement for the Angelo Shanika types, 
he he is number one in that pecking order. Yeah, he's um, as like for like as Shalika as you can get, right? Yeah, yeah, and Chimindu is great, but give him time. You know, don't don't throw him to the wolves just yet. Uh, it's I interesting, would, I right? Because I, I I get the impression that he wants to just jump straight in there. He's scoring runs. He's taking wickets. He's all over social media. You know, he's got a bit of swag about just, him as well. Yeah, like, like, he's got that kind of like puffed out chest vibe that just says that like, I'm here and yeah. I'm ready for it, which is always a good sign. Yeah, he's got that Aussie kind of. I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a, gonna give it a bash. Um, yeah. about him, doesn't he? So I kind of tempted to go see see what you can do, mate. Uh, because I do I do think our, our biggest issue is when things start to go wrong, they start to go really wrong. And that's a mental issue, right? That's all in your head. And I wonder I wonder if actually he might have the kind of uh, like the the only other player who definitely well not the only one of the players who definitely has that is Angelo right because things can kind of fall fall apart around him and he can kind of stick stick on through and actually I do think when you when the time comes to jettison him you kind of lose that attitude a little bit but maybe he's actually the natural replacement um, if he if he's got that kind of I don't care if everything's falling down around me but the thing is it's it's one thing doing it at the LPL. Yeah. In Dambula. Mm-hmm. It's a totally different thing doing it at Eden Gardens when you've got sixty thousand screaming but um screaming India fans at you, right? Um so you know, I, I think the gap between what we what happens at the LPL and then the intensity of international cricket is quite big, right? So you are right. May, maybe Something for the something for the selectors to consider, which you know I think is a, a cool part of why we have this tournament as well, right? As well as for SLC yeah. to make money. And I think it's it's fine. You could you could include Chamindu, right? But I just don't think you blood too many other guys at once, right? You know, you use different tournaments to do it slow, or sorry, different series to do it slowly over time, um, so that your whole team isn't just facing adversity for the first time. Yeah, absolutely. And you don't leak out that experience that you've got, right? You might look yeah. around the squad and might go, these these guys aren't natural winners. They're not the players we've had. You know, they, they've yeah. not won as much as, as as previous generations, but they've, you know, some of them have played a decent amount of international cricket in the last two or three years. Yeah. And I've got experience to pass on to youngsters and understand that experience of what it's like to come into the team when they haven't. Yeah. You know, when yeah. make your debut and be a tourist in a, in a full senior tour for yeah. the first time, or you know, all that. Guys, the kind of dates and venues for the India tour has been announced. Uh, the T20s will happen in very quick succession, twenty sixth, twenty seventh, twenty ninth of July in Palakele, um, which I am really looking forward to. I'm not going to be there or anything. I just hopefully be able to watch it on television yeah. so hopefully you never know uh and then uh the odis are moving to the Premadasa on the 1st 4th and 7th of august um we've talked a lot about this during this series i love it when Sri Lanka play bilaterals at home especially against the bigger sides because you know Sri Lanka everyone for the t20 game if we get a big crowd in it's just a great atmosphere it's rocking and rolling. You get the paparayan, um, everyone having a good time. It's just brilliant scenes. And I think those scenes in itself could help heal a lot of the scars in Sri Lanka cricket at the moment. Yeah. And they've all got a lot to prove. So I think, uh, you know, they'll be, they'll be hungry to show that the World Cup was a blip and this is a good T20 side that can compete with the best in the world. And, uh, you know, I think when they're in the stadium and they're hearing fans chanting their names, the the negative social media posts and all those things kind of can go out the window. Yeah, absolutely. I, um, Nick, do, do you want to give an, can I, can I pin you down for another hospital pass and, and uh, ask for kind of early prediction or is that, is it, do you want to keep your powder dry? I'm going to keep my cards close-ish to my chest. But India, I mean, we saw them, you know, 
the, the team or the squad that they chose for the Zimbabwe series was kind of transitional looking towards the future, right? A lot of guys who haven't played a load of cricket uh, being blooded, um, a load of international cricket, that is. And uh, if the LPL is anything to go by, we're probably going to get some decent batting tracks for those matches. So I think they're going to be exciting. I'd expect them to be competitive. And I think that Sri Lanka is going to take at least a game um, somewhere along the way. That's all I'm going to say for now. The only thing I will add to that is that India do have a new coach in place now. So it'll be Gautam Gambier's first yeah. um, mm-hmm. assignment. So I wonder if actually they might, because it's his first time round, he might be wanting to pick his strongest side. Um, yeah, quite we'll possibly. Because they haven't played a lot of cricket, have they, some of those guys? Yeah. Um, but yeah. who's retired? Kohli and Rohit have moved on right, right? Or is Rohit still playing T20s? I th- no, they're both moved on. Yeah. Yeah, both moved on. Jadeja has moved on. So they're going to have to pick yeah. some new blood. It's a shame. I would have thought uh, Kohli and Rohit would have wanted one more time to come down to Sri Lanka and uh, show us what <laughs> they can do. Yeah, exactly. Maybe that's where they've retired, so they can enjoy a cut through in peace. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, guys, should we leave it there for today? This is uh, the Murley end. Uh, can I have a last shout? Oh, yeah, of course you can, Nick. Can we just have a quick word on Patham's 100? Because uh, that was some innings, right? Oh, yeah. Great to watch. And uh, a reminder, which I think you put out on Twitter, Marky, that this is a guy who was passed over in the first round of the draft, which just continues to blow my mind. I think Dom put that out. Did you? No, it was Estelle. It was Estelle who yeah. put that out. I um, retweeted it. It was Estelle who put it out there. Um, crazy, uh, crazy. And he's I, just like, I he... it. oh, go on. Nick. No, go on. Mark. You... I just said I, I watched it, but I couldn't watch it live. But I watched it back, and you know, we we took when we talked about him earlier. I mentioned how. He's just developing and developing and developing. When he first burst onto the scene, he's such an orthodox player, right? And he looks timid. And I remember, I remember watching his debut against the West Indies in the West Indies, and thinking, "What, what, like, what is this? This is a guy who's coming with much fanfare. He missed the first LPL. He never got selected for that either. He gets selected for the first series, the T Twenty series afterwards, uh, because I think Mickey Arthur spotted him somewhere and was like, "We need to give this guy a shot." Yeah. And since that point. The man has just improved like 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1% yeah. every series. And now you watch him and you're like, he's potentially one of the best hitters of the ball that we've, that, that definitely should have right now. And potentially in white ball cricket, we've had in the last like 20 years or so, right? Because he- I think off that century, I think 77% of that was mid- hit from the middle of his bat. So, like, the guy sees that ball so clearly and clean, and it hits it so cleanly and his timing, when it's good, it is so good. He's not a physically massive guy, so he's it's all about timing, right? It's 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 just, um, like, uh, for me, from my perspective, it's just unbelievable and I love to see it. And I, the thing I did tweet was he needs to get into the IPL. I just want him to put these more big innings in. In if he has a couple of big innings against India, he'll get an IPL contract because there's there's a mega auction going on, and teams will be looking at him and thinking he's undervalued, and he's school. He's I can't really think of a challenge he hasn't risen risen to. Um, the, over the, the, the league, I don't. Yeah. The growth that he's shown is just like, it's incredible, right? And now he looks to just be bursting with confidence. I mean, there was that shot early in the innings of Shoreful, I think it was, where he just flicked it over mid-wicket for six. Yeah. And I mean, that mid-wicket's always been a really strong area for him, right? But now it looks like you just can't bowl straight to him. And bowlers were trying to kind of hide it outside the off stump and he was improvising and still managing to score sixes square. Uh, he just looks, yeah, just bursting with confidence, so increasingly complete as a player. And, uh, I mean, he's only, what, 25, 26? You'd expect him to still keep yeah. growing. I mean, how much how much better is he than he was this time last year? Um, where can he go? Uh, it's really exciting. It's wonderful to see a player just um, growing like that, right? 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sorry, Dom, go on. No, I was going to say, I just have one word, mental clarity. He is just playing with this clear plan in mind of how he's going to play, what shots he's going to play, and he's executing them. It, it's great to watch. And, you know, it's the best I've seen a Sri Lankan bat in white ball cricket since Sangha in 2015. Yeah, so Sangha in 2015, though, was, what, 36? Yep. I mean, you have to compare like for like, right? Patam at 26 is much is a better player than almost every other Sri Lankan player who's played what kind of in the T20 era has has been. Um, yeah. So, and you think he should be about six years away from peak. So, where where is it going? Where does it like? Where does this end? I just like praying to all the gods, the old and the new. Like, can you continue on this path? Can he can he continue to improve? Can he avoid injury? Can he get that mental like clarity? That that kind of clearness for every ball. So if he miss hits one or it doesn't do something, he will still smash the next one. And he and his such shot selection seems to be improving on time. I just I like I'd be interested because it's striking cricket. No one does like there's not enough like and I'm not attacking any journalists or broadcasters <laughs> around it, but there's not enough people doing the work in it around it, right? So if he was Australian, if he was Indian, if he was English. Uh, we'd all be would would be inundated with long reads yeah. about how he's improving his game, who he's working with, what he does, what process he follows. We don't get any of that. Um, that's the nature of our beast, right? And but I really want to know about it. I really want to know how he's becoming such a good player, right? Uh, what is go? What is happening? That is that that we keep seeing these improvements because it is so dramatic for him. Like when he first burst on the scene. I remember thinking he can't, he's not a T twenty player. He's never going to hit across the line, yeah. and now he, he he hits a whole century basically playing across the line. It's wild. Yeah. Um, um, even last year, I was like, this guy doesn't have enough boundary options and doesn't score fast enough to be a T twenty opener. I mean, I mentioned it in my newsletter piece that I think up till the end of last year he was striking at one twenty in T twenty eyes, and then that's jumped to one fifty plus this year. He's doubled his boundary percentage. Yeah. I mean, those kind of to make those kind of changes overnight, pretty much is just totally remarkable, pretty much unprecedented. And, I mean, he must yeah. be putting in some serious work behind the scenes. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. I hope the players around him look at him as an example of the way that you can evolve and totally transform your game. Absolutely. Guys, shall we leave it there? Because I know Dom's got to go in a few moments. Um We'll be back. I said at the end of the last episode, we'll be back when something happens. <laughs> I didn't think that would be two, two, what, two, three days away, right? Two days. Two yeah. days. And also, on top of all that, just so you know, Murillian lives across like four time zones. Like, there's people in Australia involved, there's people in Sri Lanka involved, there's people in the UK involved, there's people in London involved. So we're kind of never like there's. It's kind of always on. Um, so I don't eat, like. Yeah, shrunken cricket is just wild. Um, if you've got this far, you haven't subscribed, what are you doing? Hit the subscribe button, hit the follow button, leave us comments, tell all your friends, subscribe to the newsletter. We'll be back very soon. Thanks a lot. Bye. <laughs>